No matter how good a book's plotline may be, it's the characters and their relationships that make the narrative gripping. Our guest chef this week is Manisha Naidu, and she's very focused on maintaining a healthy relationship between food and fitness, which is why this week's Made of Food feature doesn't begin in the kitchen. Six days out of seven, you'll find Manisha Naidu training in the gym, and she does a lot more than just work up an appetite. There's nothing passive about her approach to life and wellness, which is both broad-based and targeted. Living a healthy lifestyle is more than just about exercise. It's a holistic view on life. And someone who practices it is Manisha Naidu. And today, we get to know her a little bit better. Manisha, hi. hi. How are you? Good, thanks. So Manisha, tell me, where did your love for exercise start? I wasn't always very fit. But after my second daughter, I realized I really needed to keep up with having two kids. Also, I really believe in the concept of healthy body, healthy mind. So it doesn't only keep me physically fit, but mentally well as well. But you don't do traditional forms of exercise. I do a couple of things. So I do weightlifting, and then I have a crossfit trainer. We do self-defense and kickboxing. Why did you decide to go with so many different forms of exercise? I find that doing different styles of exercise work different body parts. It keeps you flexible as well as strong and agile, but also it keeps it interesting. When you talk mental fitness and physical fitness, you believe that women should be very strong. I have two daughters, and for me it's really important that they learn that they have to be strong in all aspects of their lives. And also I'm very big on women supporting women. So having an all-woman self-defense class means a lot to me. I feel like we need to learn to protect ourselves and stand up for each other and to stand together. But you have another passion and I'm dying to find out about it. Yes, I do have another great love. So if you want to come home with me, I can show you. Let's go. Maintaining those energy and fitness levels means eating healthily. But Manisha doesn't believe that nutritional food need be bland. Okay, so this is my other passion. I love cooking. All right, so where did the love for cooking come from? A few years ago, my husband entered me in a reality cooking show and I did fairly well at it. And I moved my career into food. So what are we making today? Today, I'm going to do my twist on a classic prawn bisque. So, shall we get started? Yes, so I have these beautiful king prawns. I've shelled and deveined the prawns and I've reserved the shells. We're going to start off with some curry leaves and onions and some extra virgin olive oil. And then into that goes the curry leaves and finely chopped onion. We want them to soften and saute, but not to get too much of color. It smells really good. Curry leaves and onions always smell good. These are just about done, and we can add in our prawn shells. We want to get these prawn shells nice and toasted, because they make up the base flavor of the bisque. Now I have crushed ginger and garlic. Mm -hmm. You want to cook out this ginger and garlic really well, but you don't want to burn the garlic, so be really careful, because once you burn garlic, there's no real coming back from that. So we're adding in our spice blend, and we just want to saute that till it's fragrant. We're going to add in our chopped tomatoes. Now we can add in our fish stock. So what's traditionally in fish stock? It's made of fish bones, fresh veg, which is boiled in water and skimmed for impurities. The fish stock also deglazes the pan, so it picks up all the flavor from the caramelized prawn shells. Fish stocks can have a lot of salt on them and you don't want to over-season. So we'll season it right at the end. So this is just about done. We can turn down the heat and put a lid on to let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now, here I have a pot of simmering water with lemons, coriander, basil, and some salt. To this, we're going to add in our fresh prawns. Now these shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes. You really don't want rubbery, overcooked seafood. Okay, so these are done, and we can put them aside and reserve them for later. And now comes the fun part. We're going to get a stick blender and blend all of this together. The classic prawn or lobster bisque is made with the shells blended in. Okay, so that's nicely blended. But to get a perfectly smooth and silky soup, we need to put that through the finest sieve we have. Now we're just going to push this through the sieve, and what we should be left with is a perfectly silky soup. And now it's time to plate. Okay. So to start, we have some ready-cooked jasmine rice, and we're just going to roll these into little spheres. Now obviously to do that, you can't overcook your jasmine rice and you can't undercook it you either. You don't want overcooked jasmine rice and you also don't want to put too much of pressure when you're rolling. Now we're going to roll them in some black sesame seeds. Okay, and those are done. Now I have here some beautiful colourful micro herbs. It's a mixture of coriander, basil, mint, 
Next, we have cubed avocado. This has been sitting in lemon juice, so it keeps the avocado from browning. Next, go on these rice spheres that we made earlier, our cooked prawns, followed by these finely sliced baby radishes, and finally, we pour over our prawn bisque. And there we go. Why don't you have a taste? I'm not even going to argue that back, Dad. Let's go for a prawn. That is very good. You don't even have to make dinner. But on that note, what is next? <laughs> I'm going to make you one of my favorite dishes. It's a herb-crusted rack of lamb with a pomegranate jus. So we have a spice mix, and it's a blend of ginger, coriander, jeera, chili powder, and salt. So this just gets rubbed all over the lamb. Well, we're going to have to rub it inside and out. All right, well, it's already getting very hot in this kitchen, so I'm going to leave you to it, and I'll see you when the lamb is done. OK, I'll see you in a bit. Now that our lamb is completely coated in the spice rub, we're going to take it over to the stove and sear it in a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Now, this is a quick process. We want to seal the meat to keep all the juices in, but we're not cooking it through. It's going to cook through in the oven. And you want to keep turning it and seal all sides. When you're doing lamb, it's well worth going through these processes. You develop real layers of flavor in the lamb. So the lamb is sealed, and we're going to coat it with a layer of mustard to help the crust stick. So here I have some Dijon mustard. It's the smooth kind. You want to make sure that all the lamb is coated in the mustard, or you'll have an uneven crust at the end. I've made a crust, and it's a combination of dried breadcrumbs with fresh herbs. We've got in there basil, mint, and coriander. And this makes for a beautifully fragrant crust. So we're going to take our gorgeous racks of lamb and dip them directly into the herb crust. Just make sure that all of the lamb is completely crusted. Now this goes into our preheated oven for 8 to 12 minutes, depending on how you like your lamb. I like it medium, so I keep it in at about 10 minutes. Now, while that's cooking, we can get to our pomegranate jus and honey glazed veg. We're going to use the same pan that we seared the lamb in. All the flavor of the caramelized lamb is in the bottom of this pan, and we don't want to waste any of that. So we start with a little bit of olive oil, and into that goes our chopped garlic and onions. I'm going to deglaze the pan with a little bit of lamb stock. And again, if you can, make your own stocks. It's so well worth the effort. So we can add in the pomegranate juice. They sweet and tart and work so well with both savory and sweet dishes. We're going to leave this to reduce by at least half. And in the meantime, we can get started on our baby veg. In this pot, we're going to add a little bit of olive oil. These are called micro veg. They're smaller than baby veg, and they're really sweet and delicious. They also look beautiful on a plate and take just a few minutes to cook. So I heard a timer go off. Well, the lamb is ready, and we are ready to plate. Let's do this. So to start with, this is a minted pea puree, and it's easy enough. It's just steamed peas with some fresh mint and cream blended in. And then we can put on our honey glazed micro veg, some of these delicious tiny carrots. And these are tiny onion bulbs. And we're ready to carve. I've let the meat rest. You always want to let your meat rest for at least half of the cooking time so it absorbs the juices. Now, if we hadn't rested the meat, all the juices would run out and we'd have a really dry piece of lamb. We can put this on the plate. It looks so tantalizing. So I have here to finish some caramelized onion puree. What I've done is cook down some white onions with garlic and thyme, and you have to cook them really long and slow till they get caramelized and beautiful, and then they blend it with a little bit of cream. This is really delicious. And then to serve, we have our pomegranate and lamb jus. It smells and looks so appetizing. So starters and mains complete. Now it's time for my favorite course, dessert. You know, I'm all about healthy eating, but I can't resist a good dessert. So I'm going to make for you today my chocolate poached pear with amarilla custard. Oh, where do we start? So to make our poaching liquid, we're going to put in some star anise and cinnamon, cocoa powder. Here I have some sliced oranges. So we just squeeze in some of the juice and then put them in whole. And now I have some brown sugar. With the combination of the spices, the orange and the chocolate, this is a beautifully fragrant dessert. So now I have some peeled pears. 
And these are standing in acidulated water. That's just a way of saying water with lemon juice in. So the acidulated water just prevents the pears from drowning. Now these just simmer away for about 20 minutes until a knife can easily slide in. And that's when you know they cooked. In the meantime, we can get started with our custard. Now here I have some fresh cream that's heating gently. We want little bubbles to form around the edge, but not to boil it. In a bowl, I have four egg yolks and we're going to add in a tablespoon of corn flour. I'm going to whisk together the eggs, sugar and corn flour. And the corn flour helps to stabilize the eggs so that they don't split when we add the cream. Nice and smooth. Yep, it has to be perfectly smooth and all the corn flour should be dissolved. Now this is the part where we have to be really careful because we don't want to end up with scrambled eggs. I'm going to slowly pour in the cream while whisking all the time. The custard is going to go back into the pot to thicken. And again, it is a bit labor intensive. You have to... now to make this really special. I'm going to add in about a shot glass full of Amarilla liqueur and finish with a splash of vanilla extract. And the custard is done. So the pears are done. They are soft and delicious. Now, here I have a crumble that I made earlier. It's a basic shortbread and then I've chopped in some pecanuts. This just adds a textural element to the dish. We can add our poached pear. So we're just going to pour over the delicious custard. So a good generous helping of the custard. And to make it super special, I've got these beautiful edible flowers. And these are not only gorgeous, they're also really fragrant. And there we have my chocolate and orange poached pear. Oh, it looks amazing and smells divine. Manisha, thank you so much for spending the day with us today. Thank you for having me. And we wish you all the best in the future. And you guys need to go because I'm going to tuck into that pear.